Hello, hello guys! Welcome back to Steam Prison. We can finally finish off our short stories section. So that's what we're gonna do today. Finn, you just had to be a pain in the butt till the end. <laughs> but I still love you, BB. Don't worry. Alright, so now that we've seen everything, we should be safe from here on out. So let's finish Finn's short story starting with number one. Which I've seen a little bit of. <laughs> Until the moment. You will know when it is. Oh. Again. The marriage system had been abolished. That's how far I got. <laughs> it was literally the second line. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I haven't seen that happen yet. So that was the thing I was spoiled about for the grand ending. But what you gonna do? I mean, I was hoping, so I was I was happy to be like, Yes, it's finally gonna happen. But my days of frustration didn't end. Well, when you forget to sign your name on the proposal, it's kind of... <laughs> really too bad. It used to be bad, but now... The reasons had changed, though. Then give them a good look. My mother's dominating voice stopped me as I made her leave the house. Yes, of course. You gotta pick one of these proposals you're getting, young man. I want to be a grandmother one day, okay? I grimace at the letters in my hand. They all had the same contents. Marriage proposals. What am I even doing right now? And why do they want someone worthless like me? Finn! Consider the fact of how many you're getting, my dude! I truly, honestly, seriously didn't understand it. I had to doubt they wrote down the right address. There are too many for it to be a mistake. Was someone impersonating me and provoking these proposals? My goodness, the amount of, like, the low self-esteem and self-worth is strong with this boy. No, no. That wasn't possible. I could understand impersonating my younger brother, who was set to inherit the company, but there was no reason to impersonate me. I was a normal police officer in wage, position, and skill. Their address to me anyway. There's only one person I love, and she... <laughs> she didn't write me one letter. I looked at the letters. None of them say to Stella. I already knew that. She wouldn't send one. Cyrus would just tell me in person. That is true, actually. Tell you what. The letters fell from my hand. Cyrus, when did you- Sorry if I startled you. You dropped those. She said and began to gather the letters at my feet. No, I'll do it. Don't worry. Bonk. Ouch! <laughs> Classic. Our heads collided. S sorry It's okay. Here, that's all of them. Cyrus had picked them all up in the end. More marriage proposals? Oh, yes. I see. I hope there's a nice one in there for you. I, I don't! Why not? I, uh... I only love Cyrus. I can't tell her that, can I? If you can't tell her now, you never can! Just say it! I was weak. I would never be able to tell her. I'm... too busy with work. I can't take care of a family just yet. <laughs> oh, I guess that's true. Cyrus nodded a few times and handed me back the letters. I'm the same. I'm more interested in work than in romance. It wasn't the same at all. Yes. I said and nodded. An envoy will come from the depths today. 
We need strict security to prevent any incidents. Cyrus slapped me on the back. Not on the butt, eh? Her determination always helped me feel better. Yes. Um, Cyrus. Yeah? Thank you. She was surprised by this. After a moment, she smiled and said, Sure. Aw, this one again. Let's do our best today. Every day, walking off into the blue sky. Ah, oh, Finny boy, Fin, Fin, Finnegan, Fin. All right, so that was short story number one. I wonder where these ones are going to take place in the stream of time. Let's find out. In Elkreed's room. Interesting. Oh no, is this in Finn's roots? And else, like, giving him some pointers? Because that would be amazing. It didn't end well, did it? No. We found the corpse. Well, the remains. It's her. Okay, it's Elton Alrick. I see. Good work, Alrick. Okay. So this is probably Finn's bad ending. Is this from Elkrate's point of view or Finn's? I'm so confused. I gotta read more to figure this out. When Ulrich was gone, I steadied myself against the wall. I was prepared for it, but... Finding the remains was still harsh. Cyrus to Stella. It is from... Wait, Elkrate, you took over Finn's ending? Finn's short story, I mean? Okay, that's kind of nuts. Interesting. I'd had to look so long for my perfect night, but she was also... The love of his life. Finn Euclid was his name. He had confessed to a crime Cyrus was accused of. She had been innocent as well. Both of them, accused of a crime they hadn't committed. If this were a story, they should have lived a happy life in the land of their exile. Well, in the best ending they did. But reality was more cruel. She had gone to the Hounds and never come back. And he, when she disappeared. Others would dedicate everything to their revenge, but he managed to control himself. Who knows what he will do when he finds out she's dead. So Sox did end up killing her. He didn't keep her locked up forever. Interesting. <sighs> I sighed and looked up at the ceiling. I thought I'd finally found the one. I hadn't known Cyrus for long. Her battle with the commander of the Hounds in the Sanctuary District had entranced me. <laughs> I'd known she was the beautiful knight I had dreamed of. If she's ever in the depths, I have to hire her. I managed to save her once, but she died anyway. I have rotten luck, don't I? At least she had left me Finn. His personality aside, he was capable enough. And he was from the Heights. He could serve somewhat as a knight. I'm just worried about his mental state. I couldn't dismiss him out of hand. He was a person, not a broken toy. And I couldn't keep it from him either. I have to tell him the truth. Good luck, Elt. I see. I expected him to lament her death. Nothing could have been further from the truth. 
He took it well. Understood. He whispered and fell silent. Are you sure? About what? Don't you want to cry? Or scream? Are you sure? Crying won't bring Cyrus back. Well, no, it won't. It was better than blind rage and destroyed furniture, I thought. But his odd calm scared me somewhat. He looked down and bit his lip. His fingers grasped Cyrus' pendant. Which he shouldn't have had. I see. He was angry. He really was. He was just doing everything he could to suppress it. If I was a woman, I'd give him a hug. Elkry, you can hug the bro! Hug your bros! Everybody out there, hug your bros! But I was a man, and I didn't know him that well. Even putting my hand on his shoulder didn't feel right. What will you do now? I will do as you like. As I like? Yes. Whispered Finn and looked at me unsteadily. Cyrus told you to hire me as your bodyguard instead of her, right? I want to grant her wish. So I will do what you want. Oh, I see. She was gone now. All he had left of her was the pendant and her last wish. He was trying to honor that. Being my bodyguard will mean a lot of work. I'm aware. Protecting someone's life is difficult. I will protect yours with mine. There was no strength in his voice, only resignation. He knew he was going to die. His life was merely a consumable to him. I'm happy to know that, but don't throw your life away. If you can't protect the one life you've been given, you can't protect someone else's. I took his, ad his silence as admission and offered my hand to shake. Cyrus probably saved your life. I need you to live. Yes. We shook hands. His was a firm handshake. I'm not sure if he needs counseling or not. Oh, he definitely does. I decided to wait and see. I didn't know a lot about him after all. Cyrus, I have no idea what will become of your legacy. I resolved to do what I could. Rest in peace, Cyrus. Aw. Elt, you're a good bro, dude. I salute you. Now he's got two broken boys on his hands. <laughs> For different reasons. Elt just likes to take care of the broken ones. Can't believe he took over that. So Finn took over one of Yune's, and Elt took over one of Finn's. Quite curious. Okay, Finn, do we get to see this from your perspective? I think that's the problem. I don't know. I know. Well, it's not the only problem. One night, Elkreed had invited me for dinner. It was an odd time. <laughs> As most dinners are with Elkreed. What's the point of this conversation? The other man seemed happy enough, but I didn't feel comfortable. Still, I couldn't leave. He was taking care of us. Is this... After... Finn's good ending? Could you look a little more friendly? You'd be such a lady killer if you smiled. Sorry, I can't. You smile for Cyrus. She's special. Ah. I know that. <laughs> he laughed and drank from his glass. When the wine glass was empty, he called over a waitress. 
I'd like more wine. And you? I'm fine. I still have some left. Apparently. So only for me, then. Very well, said the waitress and left. You drink a lot. This isn't a lot. Right, so about my earlier criticism. Right. The mysterious dinner conversation continued. Or rather, I was being talked to. It was more of a monologue. Something about having to open up more to other people. You're still something of a shop owner. You have to draw customers in with friendliness. I'm doing that. How? Elk Creed grimace and pulled the corners of his mouth up with his fingers. Use these muscles more. <sighs> Since when have you been like that? Like what? Why is she the only one you open your heart to? I'd been like that since I was exiled to the depths. Some people had tried to help me, but most had tried to threaten or defraud me instead. But... Since I was a child... A child? How old? Eight or nine. Jaded at such an early age. Man, he and Ulrich really do share some stuff in common. I stared at him and said nothing. Elkreed put his hands on the table and gestured for me to continue. What's there to say, really? I really had to wonder why I had to talk about these things and think back on my childhood. My parents had no hopes for me, unlike yours. Oh, you know my parents? No, but I can tell by your attitude. Your parents must have loved you a lot. <laughs> I suppose so. I was born perfect. Flawless from the moment I entered this world. I see. You were supposed to laugh at that. I can't. Sorry, then. Oh, thank you very much. Elkrete smiled and thanked the waitress who poured his wine. This man... Why couldn't he just make it clear whether he wanted to listen to me or make fun of me? Whatever. I'll just tell him and get it over with. When I spoke, I thought of Cyrus waiting for me at home. I have a younger brother. On my ninth birthday, he fell ill. Even two years younger, he was already showing more promise. My father and my mother both had their eyes only on him. My ninth birthday sealed it for me. Nobody wished me a happy birthday the entire day. Ouch. The servants made me a minced meat steak. The only thing special for that day. So you had servants too. Interesting. They knew how to make it properly. But to me, it somehow tasted salty. That's because of the tears that fell on it. I realized that I was worthless. I've been living in shame of myself ever since. The work my father gave me had never gone well. I even failed the entrance exam for the police two times. It was pathetic. Living itself was painful. But I didn't have the courage to run away either. So I just continued to exist. I miraculously passed the police entrance exams on the third attempt. That's when I met her. Cyrus! <laughs> ah, your beloved Cyrus. I glared at him. He raised his hands in appeasement and I continued. She didn't push me away even though everything I did was a catastrophe. She praised me. She accepted me. She was the only one who took me the way I was. Wow. What? Oh, nothing. I'm just surprised by how deep-seated this is. Elkri drank more wine and nodded. 
You really weren't blessed with the best family, huh? No. I just have no talents. Oh, but you do. Don't be ridiculous. What do you know? Some things. You told me about them yourself. Though that's only because he had told me to. You're even taller than I am, and almost as handsome. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you have the gift of loving others. The gift of loving others? Yes, Elkreet said and pushed up his glasses using his middle finger. You confessed to a woman's crime because you loved her and threw everything you had away. That's not a regular thing to do. I don't know. You should be proud of yourself. Pride. I'd never been proud. Elkreed himself was a proud and self-assured person, so it was easy for him to say. Compared to my gloomy self, he was like the sun. Wow, the Ulrich and Finn parallels just continue. Quite honestly, the type I dislike. <clears throat> I don't think I will be able to like you. That's alright. I will like you all the more. What? I'm a philanthropist. I don't want it. Love is free and infinite. I can't hoard it all without sharing. No, I can't. My gloominess wasn't even that bad. You seem to be obsessing over things as well, don't you? We have so much in common. Let's be friends. I'd prefer to keep my distance. That's so cold, Elkreed said as he shrugged. Was he serious? How much was a joke? I didn't understand, and I didn't like that. I can't believe Cyrus works for this man. Don't worry about her. I won't touch her. What? You were thinking about Cyrus, right? I can tell by looking at your face. Your expression changes very slightly when you think about her. A lot of things happened, but it's obvious that you're picturing the person you love. May I go home now? I told him what he wanted to know. I arose from my seat before receiving his permission. Of course. Thank you for coming with me. Oh, also. Elkreed put his elbows on the table and rested his chin on his hands. Send a message to Cyrus, he said. I straightened myself, expecting something about work. Tell her she can take the day off tomorrow. You're not joking? No. It's my way of thanking you for coming here. Enjoy the day with her tomorrow. I'm a good man, aren't I? <laughs> Said Elkreed and laughed. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> I said, but laughed too. Finally, you laugh with me. I hope you'll open up even more. I don't want to reject you either. We should make the best of this together. I'll think about it. As positively as possible, I hope. I'm tired. <laughs> That's what hanging out with Elkreed does. I knew he liked to talk, but I was still surprised. Open up, huh? I only had Cyrus. I only needed Cyrus. Or so I thought. If I'm going to live here, I will have to deal with other people. I'd been exiled, but I was still from the Heights. Many were not hospitable towards me. I know what I have to do to open up. It wasn't that I couldn't trust others. I just couldn't trust myself. My feelings of inferiority were not easily dispelled. It was possible that I'd have to live with them forever. I have to accept myself. I wanted to be someone Cyrus could be proud of. I wanted to be a man worthy of her. 
I'll go home. I walked along the cobbled road, shining in the street lights, thinking about nothing except Cyrus, my love. Well, I'm glad Elt is trying to crack away at that being like, you know, it's not really healthy to obsess over one person. I'm happy for you guys, but like, open up to others. It'll be a healthier thing for you. It was interesting. I was not expecting so much Elt and Finn bonding going on, but I'm okay with it. It was really good. I enjoyed those short stories a lot. But now we are done with that. It's all done! Huzzah! That means we only have one thing left to do. The grand ending story, and then we are done with this game. Can you believe that, guys? It's been such a long time coming, but we're finally here at the end of all things. So I hope you enjoyed Finn's short stories, and I do hope to see you for the grand ending after story. Until next time, I will see you later.